Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Lennon. Here. Mr. Here. Here. Second. Yes. Mayor Henry. Yes. Mr. Lauer. Yes. Mr. Lennon. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Okay, um, we have nominations for vice chairperson. We have a nomination. I can uh, nominate Ernie Schmitz. I'll second it. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Abbas? Yes. Mayor Henry? Yes. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Lennon? Yes. Mr. Marucci? Yes. Mr. Buschetti? Yes. yes. Mr. Pitt? Yes. Joe Yes. Okay, nominations for secretary. Mr. Maruti, you are interested? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Mr. Boss? Yes. Mayor Henry? Yes. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Lennon? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Maruti? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mayor Yes. Vice Secretary? I didn't know we had a Vice Secretary. Hmm? Oh, Dawn. Yeah. <laughs> I nominate Dawn. Second. Roll call. Mr. Boss? Yes. Mayor Henry? Yes. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Just for the record, that's Dawn Forb. <laughs> okay, uh, board attorney. We have a nomination. <laughs> nomination for attorney. Kelly. De Francisco. Oh, De Francisco. The law firm of De Francisco, baby. But we want Kelly. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Second? Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Abbas? Yes. Mr. Mayor Henry? Yes. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Lennon? Yes. Mr. Marucci? Yes. Mr. Buschetti? Yes. 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 Okay. Then we have our um, outside consultants. So for the engineering, we have um, three. Um, Companies that put in um, resumes, Environmental Resolutions, CME Associates, and Delaware Raritan. So those are the three that uh, indicated they were interested in serving the planning board. So I have a, a motion. I'd make a motion to continue our professionals. Moved by Mr. Uh, Mayor Henry. Second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Schmidt. Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mayor Henry. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Okay. And for planner, we have uh, three um, companies also that put in, um, showed an interest in, that's Environmental Resolutions, Mark Remsa, and CME Associates. I have a motion. I'll move it. Move by Second. Mr. Schmidt. Second, Second by Mayor. Roll call. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. 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 And then uh, traffic, environmental resolutions, and CME Associates were the two um, companies that put in uh, bids. Is there a motion? I'll, mo I'll make a motion. Moved by the mayor. I'll, I'll move second. it. Second. second. 
Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Obama? Yes. Mayor Henry? Yes. Mr. Lauer? Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Chairman Yes. And then our tree expert, Chestnut Arb Arbicultural. I'll move it. Moved by Mr. Schmidt. Second. Second by Mr. Spigot. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Voss? Yes. Mayor Henry? Yes. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Lenny? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Okay, then we have subcommittees. We have the minor subdivision site plan. Um, last year we had uh, Ernie Schmidt, the mayor, and uh, Mr. Abbas. So are you all still interested in serving? I would like to continue on a minor sub. Pardon me? You'd like to yes. continue? Mr. Abbas? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Okay. Um, and the master plan, we had myself, Mr. Schmidt, and the mayor. So, okay. And open space, Mr. Schmidt. Okay. And um, what was the LD? Land development. Oh, the land development ordinance. Myself, the mayor, and uh, Mr. Mollis. But is he here? No, Joe was uh, unable to attend tonight. He called me and said he was not going to be able to you attend. You know if he's interested in... I can't speak for Mr. Miles, but I'm sure, but we can. All right. Well, why don't we, we'll that pick can that be one changed up. throughout yeah. the year. We're, we're, okay. It's going to well, be temporary, and if he's not interested, we can amend that. All right. So we'll do myself, the mayor, and, and Mr. Miles, and if there's a change, we'll, we'll, announce, it. we'll announce that. Okay. So um, our attorney is going, oh, we have to approve the rules and regulations. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the rules and regulations of the planning board? They were included in your packet. There's no changes from last year. Um, if anybody is interested in uh, changing anything, we can talk about that during the year. Again, this is something we adopt annually. These are the bylaws of the board. They pretty much track with what's provided for in the, in the state statute, municipal land use law. Um, in some instances, there's more explanation or more specifics that pertain to exactly how we handle things here. Um, and it's a living document, so throughout the year, if things come up, we can adopt, we can change it. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, or adopt the rules of the planning board? I'll make the motion that we adopt the re adopt. Okay, Mayor, and <laughs> seconded by Mr. Pink. Mr. Obama? Yes. Mayor yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to give. Yeah. Okay. Now our attorney is going to give. I know you have a busy speech. agenda this evening, but since it is the reorganization meeting, I think it's always good to go over. First of all, congratulate our new planning board members, um, and our continuing on planning board members. Uh, this is a volunteer position, and this is a hard job. Um, there's been some um, difficult decisions that the boards had to make, especially over the last year, and uh, I don't think it's said often enough that you're thanked for the time that you put in to sit up here. Um, but again, you are volunteers, you're not professionals. Some of you have some good backgrounds that help and contribute to what you do here. Um, but I feel like it's my job every once in a while to just kind of go through and bring us back to the fact that this is a quasi-judicial body and that we are required to follow the laws uh, and the ordinances of the town and the state and, this, and in the other country. Um, so this initial meeting is a good time to just review that br briefly and I'll try to be, I have a couple pages here, I'll try to skip around. Um, You've probably heard me say it once or twice before, but both the United States Constitution and the New Jersey Constitution protect the right to life, liberty, and property. Zoning laws would have been considered unconstitutional at the time of the Founding Fathers, but back in 1926, the U.S. Supreme Court, in the first case called the Village of Euclid case, settled the question that in modern times, zoning, if it's carefully tied to a legitimate police power, is permitted. That was the beginning of people being able to tell, of governments being able to tell people what they can do with their property. The founding fathers probably would have taken you out and shot and quartered you if you told them what to do with their property. Um, but it, it's evolved over the years, and it's a very specific area of the law. Um, you have wonderful professionals here, the, the board engineer and planner, the other consultants that we've um, named this evening, uh, and myself, it's our job to help you get through the law on this. So I just want to you know, go through a couple parts of that now. 
the New Jersey Constitution provides that the state legislature may enact general laws permitting municipalities to enact zoning regulations. That's the municipal land use law. We also call, often call it the MLUL. You'll get used to the shorthand. The MLUL um, gave the power to the municipalities from the state to zone. The, the state also maintained some of those powers. You'll notice that we don't get applications here on state park property. Um, the school boards, for example, are generally exempt from local municipal regulation because they're considered state property. So when we look at applications that come in, um, there's always those kind of things we need to look at as well. Public utilities often are, with, are outside of our zone, our, our, our jurisdiction, although we do have, um, we can give them um, courtesy hearings and give them advice. They're not necessarily required to follow it. The planning board has really very specific powers. There are five that are listed in the statute, and that's all that the board is really permitted to do. The board is, is uh, designed to adopt the master plan, review and approve subdivision and site plan applications, set the official map, review and decide conditional use applications, review and decide certain variance applications in conjunction with a site plan. Those are the only required powers of the planning board. Uh, people often think this board has a lot of power to do a lot of things, but it really is very circumscribed. And because it comes out of, it comes from the state constitution through, through a statute down to the township as to what we're permitted to do, we're not permitted to go outside those those borders. There are two permissive areas that um, we are permitted. We can conduct courtesy reviews, and that's what we do when a school board comes in or a public utility comes in. We can give them sort of advice and consent, but we can't tell them they have to do something. So those are the courtesy reviews. Um, we're also authorized, if by ordinance, the township asks the board to do additional things, such as redevelopment plans. That comes from a different statute, and the council asks the board, in this case, it often asks the planning board in Oldbridge to deal with um, redevelopment issues, and so that's assigned through a different ordinance, a different statute. It's important really for the board to know that, be, that these powers are limited and that it's always a statute or an ordinance that we're following. In site plan and subdivision applications reviewed by the planning board, and if, it, and if an applicant meets the requirements of the ordinance, 99% of the time the board does not have a choice but to approve the application. We can go through and make sure they're doing everything properly, but in the end, the board really has a hard time turning, this board has a hard time turning down an application that meets the ordinances. The zoning board, on the other hand, tends to see more variances, that, more variances in things that are outside what's permitted under the law. And the, ver the zoning board often has a, a bigger latitude to deny cases. So if you've been in, in front of both boards, um, that's one of the main differences. This board does see cases with variance. There's called C variances. And there's a statute, and then there's case law that provides for how those C variances are applied. There's basically two ways to look at it. We call it the C1 test, the physical features test, where you're talking about the property, whether it has unusual property lines or an unusual shape or the topography is weird, something real specific to that, the physical features of that property, or the C2 variance, sometimes called the public benefits or the flexible C variance. Um, and that's where you're looking at the larger picture and the benefits of, of what the project entails versus what would have been permitted. When the board does have a variance that it's looking at, then it does have some leeway to ask the applicant to do certain things or make certain changes. But in most cases, they need to be related to or relevant to the variance that's being requested. Um, I, I know it's, it's difficult when uh, the public comes in and listens to these applications because they don't know the statute and they don't know the ordinance. Um, but the board does get that information ahead of time. And if you ever have questions, please ask me during the hearing or even beforehand if you want to, but certainly during the hearing. If any of the board members are not sure what the statute is or what the ordinance is or what we're applying during the hearing, um, it probably means that the people next to you aren't sure either, so please ask. I'd rather have us go through those kind of things. That's what I'm here for. I, I try not to get involved and stop you from your deliberations, but that is my job. If you, have a conf if you have any confusion about what's going on or what the ordinance or the standard is, I definitely want you to bring it up in the public hearing and let me go over it for you. Um, certainly before the vote. But every case that the board hears is unique. Um, and every property is unique. And in land use law, that's, that's a, a theme. Every property is unique. So we also talk about you don't want to do something and create a precedent. You really are not creating precedents when you do this. Every property is, is considered an individual and every property needs to be looked at on its own. Um, as a member of the planning board, you are like a judge. Um, there are certain things you need to adhere to. Our new member, all of our members have to go through plant through a, a, an instruction process. Um, there's also some 
more senior classes now. So if anybody who's been on the board for a number of years wants to go to one of those classes, you can let me know and we can figure out how to get you there. Um, but there are things to just to remember since you are like judges, you need to start every case with an open mind. Um, you can't pre prejudge a case. The applicant has the right to come in and give all their evidence and for you to hear all of that before you make up your mind. Um, remember to let me know all the time if there's a personal or financial conflict that anybody has. Everybody is either required to be a, an employee of the township or live in the town, so conflicts do come up. It's not a bad thing as long as you let us know about it. Um, and remember that the board is also required to conduct all of its deliberations during our formal meetings. If, an, if anybody comes to you outside in the supermarket and asks you a question about the case, you're not permitted to talk about it. Um, you can't give an opinion, you shouldn't you know, give them advice. Uh, and, you, and tell them it's my fault, I'm not allowed to do it. Um, and if somebody does come up and really corner you and you feel like maybe there was too much of a conversation, let me know, because that conversation could be grounds for recusing you from the hearing. Um, and that's a tough one, because again, you're required to live or work in the town, and so you're gonna see the people, you know, when, especially on the bigger cases that go for multiple hearings, you're gonna see the people around. But this board is charged to be judge-like and to be impartial and to listen all sides before you make your decisions, and to have everything done in public where everybody can hear everything that's done. So those outside conversations really, really are not a good idea for you, for the board, for, and they can be a ground for an appeal. Um, again, I wanna thank you for your service. Um, and then there's just two, there's three things I'm looking at. I try to watch what's going on in the state legislature, and this last week, oh my goodness, they, <laughs> the, uh, the bills that have gone by. Um, there are three I'm looking at, just so you know. There's a, a, a bill if, um, that requires that the master plan land use element address smart growth, storm resiliency, and environmental sustainability. This board updated our master plan last year, so this wouldn't, even if it's adopted, um, both houses have passed this, the governor hasn't signed it. Even if it is adopted, it shouldn't affect us until another 10 years when we go into it, but it might be something that if there's an opportunity, I mean, perhaps in Lawrence Harbor somewhere, if we want to look at you know, sustainability or storm um, protection, that's a place to put it now, that the, the master plan is gonna re request that. Um, I assume that'll get signed. Uh, Senate Bill uh, 3233 tightens the provisions regarding the performance and maintenance fees that may be collected by municipalities. It passed the, it passed the Senate and it's been passed out of committee on assembly, but at least as of yesterday morning, there wasn't a vote. So I don't know if that one passed or not, um, but I'll double check that. And if it didn't, it may come back up again. They're trying to um, rein in what um, the fees and the um, performance and maintenance fees, what you can collect, what it can be based on, and then how long you can hold it. Um, so that's technical things we'll need to look at. And Senate Bill uh, 2788 limits the requirements for submission that a municipality may require for preliminary site plan and subdivision approvals. The Senate committee has approved it, um, but there was no vote on the floor yet. The assembly hasn't passed it out of committee. But I know the builders groups, and I've been to a couple of um, continuing legal education classes, builders groups are really pushing for this, um, and they may go forward in the next session. So it's something we need to look at. The subdivision, the, the, our minor site plan committee, um, we may need to kind of adjust how that works and, and what we need to do. Um, so it's something just to, to we'll look for over the next few months to see what happens. Okay. Thank you for your indulgence in that, but I think it's important to bring you back to the, the, the law and the, the basis and then as we start each season. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to let everybody know that this is, meeting is being televised and it, it will, the cameras will go off at 10 um, and the meeting We'll probably go on beyond that. But. Okay, uh, to the agenda for tonight, we have um, completeness waivers, 47-17P, um, Woodhaven Meadows, LLC, phase four. Hi, uh, Brian Plocker, Hutton Chimanowitz on behalf of the applicant. Hi. Um, did you want to present anything? Or? Uh, no, we we're have... in receipt of the planner's memo dated January right. 3rd. Um, the three items for which my client is seeking a waiver were provided in connection with the original uh, preliminary subdivision and uh, site plan approval. Those are on file, and um, we're obviously in agreement with the planner's recommendation. Okay. Um, Ms. O'Kane, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I hope everyone had a chance to read that January 3rd memo. Um, he's correct that 
the, all three of these reports were all included um, with the, the prior application 56-01P. So I recommend that these waivers um, be granted. Um, is there any questions from the board? Okay, do we have a motion then to uh, grant the completeness waiver? I'll move it. Moved by Mr. Schmidt. I'll second it. And seconded by Mr. Marucci. Roll call, please. Yes. Mayor Henry? Yes. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Lenny? Yes. Mr. Pink? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Yes. Okay, the minutes of December 5th, 2017. Is there a motion? I think it's another complete motion. Mm -hmm. Um. That's, uh, you were good, you printed the old one, here's the new one. Oh, we have one more completeness waiver. Sorry about that. 54-17P, K of Novian, Novian Shore Acquisitions. Hi, good evening, Madam Chairwoman. Peter Clauser with the firm Hobb and Pape on behalf of K of Nanian. Uh, it's pretty much identical to the waivers that you just granted uh, for the prior application. This is an amendment to a prior approval. Um, we've read Ms. O'Kane's report. Uh, she stated the same information. Those, those documents were submitted as part of the original approval. Uh, so we're asking for a waiver from, for same. And uh, we agree with uh, Ms. O'Kane's analysis. Did you have anything? Mr. Glaser is correct. This is pretty much an identical situation to the Woodhaven one. Uh, I don't have an application number, but it was for an approval granted by the Planning Board in March 2005. So my same recommendation that these waivers be granted. Any questions by the board? I have, a, I have a question. Katie, being it, it was, so, it was um, approved so long ago, uh, 12 years ago, has anything changed where, these, uh, where granting these waivers would put us at any type of disadvantage or thing? Or? I, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, I, I think that um, even what they're requesting here, the amendment to the, um, to the actual plan, if you looked at the, the first paragraph, they're, they're just changing some lot lines in the subdivision, and we, we met with them. Um, and then on top of that, they're just changing, they're requesting some of the, uh, some C variances from how the, the single family homes were approved. I don't think that they're gonna impact these, the way the statements were. Um, I don't think those reports will change much since then. And I also don't think that what they're requesting, what they're proposing is gonna have a major impact from the Thank original you. approval. Thank no you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, any other comments or questions by the board? Okay, is there a motion to grant the waiver? I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'll second. The mayor and Mr. Schmidt. Roll call, please. Mr. Abbas? Yes. Mayor Henry? Yes. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Lenny? Yes. Mr. Marucci? Yes. Mr. Pesquetti? Yes. Mr. Payne? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Cheryl Yes. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay, the minutes now for December 5th and December 12th, 2017. Is there a motion? I'll move it. Mr. Schmidt, moved by Mr. Schmidt. Second? I'll second. Uh, second by Mr. Mabucci. Roll call, please. Mr. Abbas? Yes. Mayor Henry? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Well, I'm going to say yes to the December 5th, but I wasn't here on December 12th, so I'll abstain on that. Okay, discussion of the 2016 annual report. Ms. O'Kane, did you have any? Was that the, from the zoning board? From the zoning board. So uh, we provided to the planning board for their um, edification, um, but... I didn't have anything in particular. The one comment I did make at the zoning board meeting, which was held uh, at the end of 2017, was that um, if you look through the annual report, you'll notice that there are a lot of single names on them. Um, that's, you can infer from it, but it is because there are a lot of single family homeowners coming before the zoning board for D variances, whether it be, it's mostly for, for floor error ratio, which the D variance, uh, D4 variance and the zoning board see, but most people are finishing their basements, which wasn't contemplated when their, when their homes were approved um, in most of the major developments. And so I made a recommendation to the zoning board that hopefully we can amend the land development ordinance to kind of, um, amend that in some way that we can contemplate how we can uh, take the take the um, 
burden off of homeowners having to pay fees and come before the zoning board um, for a floor for floor area ratio for finished basement essentially most people are finishing their basements as play areas for their children the stipulations on the zoning board are, are mostly that we can't you can't create another bedroom or anything you can't rent it out it's just a play area to increase the, the size of the home um, and so hopefully we can implement something in the land development ordinance that contemplates that to take that burden off of homeowners having to come in before the board and represent themselves um, and that was my only suggestion thank you anybody have any questions regarding that Mr. Piscetti. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have a question as much as um, uh, thank you, Katie, for presenting that. I think that um, some of the rules and the ordinances and uh, stature, all, all these things uh, that come under the homeowner's uh, you know, domain is uh, onerous. And uh, I think this is one way to help the situation. Not that I don't agree that we need laws. We do need laws and rules, uh, however, uh, some of the rules are just uh, overreaching, and uh, uh, Ms. O'Kane is trying to correct that, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, um, we have Resolution 35-15P, WAWA, Extension of Time Resolution. Do we, what's that? Um, you approved this last meeting, so this is just the paperwork um, formalizing the resolution. The Wawa had come in. They had approval two years ago. It was in two parts, um, to um, put in the diesel pump and, to the, and the trash area in the back. So they've just asked. It's taking them longer to get to it than, um, than their, their approval gives them protection for two years from changes in the zoning. Nothing's changed, so they'd like another year to get it done. And we told them yes last time, so this is just the paperwork memorializing that. Okay. Anybody have any questions regarding that? Okay. So, do we do a motion to do a motion to yeah. approve the to adopt the resolution? Yeah. We have a motion to uh, extend the time resolution. I'll move it. Moved by Mr. Schmidt. Second. I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Abbas. Roll call, please. Mr. Abbas. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. 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 Application 19-17P, Avalon Bay Communities Incorporated. Another resolution. Hmm? We have a segment. What else is there? Oh, we have another waiver. resolution. The resolution for waiver. Of one second. <laughs> <laughs> What's this one? I don't even have that in mind. Waiver of site plan. Okay, Ferrard Farouk, 40-17 PW. Do we? Do we have any information? Okay. Do we have information on that? Oh. Oh. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Mr. Sachs prepared the resolution. That's why I look confused. <laughs> we don't have? You voted on it. That's the paperwork. So oh, okay. We've already approved, it. approved the paperwork. All right. We're on to Avalon Bay. So do, we'll do the uh, vote, vote to approve the paperwork. Okay. We'll uh, take a motion to to vote on 40-17PW for, for reproof. I'll move it. Moved by Mr. Uh, Schmidt. Second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Uh, Lauer. Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. Have a long day. How are you doing there? Madam Chairwoman, just before we start this application, I know uh, Councilman Piscitti, I know, was uh, sworn in tonight as uh, a member of the Planning Board. Um, I know he did participate uh, as a member of the public uh, during the public portion and made comments. Uh, I've spoken to him, and uh, he has no problem with recusing himself uh, for purposes of this application. So uh, I'll ask him to step down, and he can either retire for the evening or if he wants to sit in the audience that's fine but uh, certainly not to make any further comments
<clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Ms. Chairwoman, uh, members of the board, uh, once again, for the record, my name is Robert Kasuba. I'm here from the law firm of Biscare Hoff representing the applicant, Avalon Bay Communities. Uh, we're here tonight on the uh, fourth hearing uh, regarding this application for preliminary and final site plan approval and minor subdivision approval. Um, at the last hearing, there was some additional follow-up information that was requested by the uh, board staff that we didn't get to the board staff before that meeting. We have since provided that information, and it was my hope that we could continue on with a, a short presentation uh, from Maurice Rashid, who is our traffic consultant, uh, who can touch on that additional traffic information that was submitted over, uh, submitted to the board and also to the board staff. And then I hope that we will then conclude our case um, and then open up for public questions and comments. So with that, Maurice. Mr. Rashad, I'll remind you, you're still on your oath from prior meetings. Okay. Mr. Rashad, could you just give the board an overview of the supplemental information that was provided to the board and also to the board's consultants? Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Maurice Rasha testifying on traffic. Uh, just to give you a very quick summary, uh, the uh, uh, information we submitted to your engineer included a revised traffic study, which does not include Oakwoods as an access point. In other words, it includes that all the traffic goes to Ferry Road we also did a warrant analysis to look into uh, the need for a traffic signal at the driveway with Ferry Road. <clears throat> we also provided the concept for a left turn on Ferry Road into the development. And um, lastly, we provided a concept plan for improvements at the intersection of Ferry Road and Route 18 that shows the addition of a right turn lane to Ferry Road and a, uh, uh, an estimate of construction cost. It is my understanding that um, your engineer is in agreement with our warrant analysis. In other words, she's agreeing that a traffic signal is not justified or warranted. It is also my understanding that your engineer has reviewed the concept plan for the um, left turn in and she's also in agreement generally with the concept. She may have some minor comments of, uh, that are technical in nature. Um, it is also my understanding that um, your engineer has a different concept plan for the improvements of Ferry Road and Route 18. So that summarizes what we, what we submitted and my understanding of um, the um, uh, comments um, uh, that your engineer uh, gave me on the submission. Um, now I'll give you just a very quick recap just to uh, refresh your memory on what we indicated before. We'll take just about a minute or two. Uh, this is just to remind the board that um, the applicant, um, Avalon Bay, uh, went through a lot of expense to have the right to use the existing driveway, which is owned by the hospital. And um, we're proposing to improve this driveway to make it uh, safer and to improve capacity to it. We're also agreeing with the request of your engineer to improve uh, the area of Ferry Road fronting uh, the, the driveway uh, by installing a left turn lane. Um, we've also submitted all of the studies that were requested, the additional studies that were requested. We are um, also agreeing, if that is the board's desire, not to use Oakwoods Parkway for traffic. Just to clarify that point, it would still be open for emergency access. For emergency correct? access only, that's correct. And um, um, I'd also like to remind the board that this is really a permitted use application. Um, 
and um, um, that the applicant um, has agreed to pay the fair share contribution as calculated by your engineer in her letter of October 10, 2017. I believe the amount was about $85,000. And uh, lastly, um, as we discussed during the last hearing, we did meet with the Board of Education and we have an agreement with them as far as buses um, and the uh, bus operation on site. The board, excuse me. If the board or the board staff have any questions, I believe that we're done our direct testimony. We provided the additional information that was requested by the board staff. We're happy to respond to any questions or concerns. Hey, um, I, I'm sure staff has. I just wanted to ask, what, what was the resolution regarding the buses? They, they have uh, agreed that the bus will use the general loop area. Uh, they um, uh, also uh, indicated that the exact location of the stop will be determined at a later time, but they looked at the plan and they have made a, um, uh, a judgment that the bus will go in and will circulate uh, through the development. But they did say that they will not go up the extension to the cul-de-sac. So along that extension, um, uh, people will have to walk to the loop road to uh, gain access to um, the location where the bus stops. Um, does anyone, um, I'm Ms. Shapiro, I know you have. Um, I, I did have a conversation with Linda Palumbo, who's the head of transportation for the Board of Education. Um, today she did call me after um, representatives from Avalon Bay or their traffic consultant had gone to her and sort of worked out the details. Um, she did say that she prefers to enter the site and that it, the site is uh, amenable to the bus actually entering um, and I think it's Forest Lane, which is the circular drive around. Um, she did mention that it's much safer to do that than to, to be on Ferry Road and that there was available area for her to circulate the buses. She did request that at the intersection of Forest Lane and um, Evergreen, Evergreen? Evergreen, that there be a bus shelter um, located at that intersection. So for the um, children who would be in the townhomes at the rear, she won't enter that cul-de-sac. They'd have to walk down the street or either get dropped off at that location and they'd have a bus shelter. I think on the record I'd like to, similar with, with a previous application down the road, um, get on record that the size of that bus shelter to probably accommodate about 20 children. That's acceptable. Um, you would recall then our traffic consultant was here, um, who's a subconsultant to environmental resolution, who's our, one of our professionals on staff um, that, that you actually voted um, tonight. And uh, Deanna Drum, our traffic consultant, couldn't be here um, with me. Is um, is is Brian Prosca, um, who's here in her place and has been fully up to date on the progress of what has been going on uh, to date. Um, there was a couple of issues or a couple of comments that um, Deanne and I had worked through um, since getting um, Mazur's last traffic uh, submission on December 29th. Um, there's a couple of items I wanted to go through, um, one being the concept plan that was submitted on Ferry Road for the left turn um, turning lane into Avalon Way from Ferry Road. Um, two comments that she had, one being um, there was a, a taper length um, that she wanted to revise because it seems, or not revise, uh, she wanted it to be dimensioned on the plan so she could see that it meets the criteria. It looks like it was like a little bit short. Um, and then the secondary comment that she had was um, that the application that's across the street that was previously approved for the Dunkin' Donuts um, had a dedicated left turn lane into the Dunkin' Donuts as well as into the hospital driveway. Um, she had requested that that striping just simply be placed on, on the concept plan so we could see that um, and how that lines up with um, the left turn lane into Avalon Way. Comment 95 of my original memo back in September had talked about um, 
RSIS and the requirements in residential um, developments for a sidewalk on both sides of the road. Um, at a minimum, I had requested that the sidewalk be extended from the last building um, in the development um, and proceed down at least the eastern side of Avalon Way to Ferry Road. In that same comment, no number 95, from that September memo, I had asked that the applicant um, provide ADA accessible curb ramps along Ferry Road and connect that sidewalk um, to to, this, to the next driveway or to the middle driveway for the hospital um, so that it could provide access or multimodal connectivity by walking um, to that Dunkin' Donut. So the residents can then come down out of the development and have a safe way to traverse on, on Ferry Road um, to that. Um, I did have a technical um, review meeting with the consultant where I had sent an email um, where I recapped um, that one request. Um, the, the email was dated November 20th, 2017, and one of my comments um, was that I acknowledged that during that meeting there were environmental constraints on the south side of Ferry Road that may not um, make that sidewalk viable or even the, the bus pad itself. The good news is, is they had worked it out where they actually squeezed everything in. They have the left turn lane, they have the, the bus pad there. Um, they do not have, from, the, from that intersection of Avalon Way to the bus pad, um, an ADA accessible ramp. In addition, um, from that pad to that middle driveway for the hospital, they don't have that connection and then another ADA accessible ramp curb ramp at that driveway. Um, so I guess I want clarification, and, and I apologize um, to Mr. Rashad because earlier when I, I, I didn't even open the plan because I was relying on Mrs. Drum's um, comments, and she never, she probably didn't remember my initial comment back in September when I had requested that sidewalk. So um, I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking for that connection, and, and we're talking about 330 feet to get to that driveway um, for that connection. Mr. Silva? I'd have to confer with my client. I don't think that's an issue that we've discussed recently, so I'd have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Um, there was, there was earlier on in September, I had asked, um, oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> sorry about that. I apologize. I was, I was conferring with the civil engineer to see what's exactly involved in that. Um, there was a concept plan that was also submitted um, by a major consultant that, um, Dawn, can you put that? Can you put that concept plan by Mazer up on the screen? Did you? I didn't look. Oh yes. Um, if you could zoom in a little bit on that intersection. So I think in that September meeting, um, I remember I had put up an exhibit on the on the screen where I was showing. Um, an aerial view or Google Earth imagery of the intersection itself. Um, and I think based on the traffic study, from what I remember, um, the, the no-build scenario had about 81 right turns at that intersection, and then the build scenario um, in 2019 had probably about three times the amount making a right turn on red. Um, the initial proposed um, suggestion or improvement um, by Mazer was that we, um, sort of change the signal timing at that intersection. And if you recall, I had reached out to DOT and that wasn't really amenable to them. Well, Mazer had come back now with a concept adding a right turn. So there would be two dedicated right turns here and one left. Um, what I had done was um, I had contacted DOT to, to see, because in my mind I had envisioned a slip ramp, but I wanted to get their take um, as far as what would be um, their preference at this intersection, they operate that signal. Um, they had said that it was good, um, <coughs> but 
there are many factors that would probably lead them to prefer the slip ramp. Um, one being um, an issue now with the right turn on red. So you have two dedicated right turns at this intersection. Um, one of the, the head of traffic and signal had said to me, well, there's not many places in New Jersey where you have the two dedicated rights like that. Now, if you have right turn on red, only the, the, the lane that's closest to the curb line would be making the right. Um, there's ways to try and control that. And that when I was talking to our traffic consultants, they were saying to me, well, there could be um, a blank out sign. Blank out, yes. Blank out sign that Blank could be out. there, which is like that digital sign that's, that doesn't permit you to make the right turn on red, especially when the U-turn movement is permitted. And there's a conflict with that U-turn. So the positive on the slip ramp would be that you move the right turn away from that U-turn conflict. Um, another thing that DOT had said to me was, well, now if you have the slip ramp instead, you're now... Um, creating the two lanes that are existing there now as two dedicated left turns. So now everybody that's coming on Route 18 going northbound to that slip ramp to make the U-turn to come down south now has two available lanes to make the left. Um, so, so there was three different concepts that my department had sort of worked on. Um, that's what I have in front of you as the aerial images. There's, there's a concept A, B, and C and, and Dawn, um, if you could pass it over to, to Maurice, I hadn't shown him to him yet. Um, if you could just open C at this point, because I don't want to go through the iterations um, prior, but. So. Just, just quickly, there was, a, there was an initial concept A where I, hu I hugged a little bit towards Ferry Road, and, and I, that radius was a little bit more tighter. Um, then there was a second concept where we sort of tried to use the existing roadbed of the old U-turn um, to see if we could maybe salvage something there. Um, it, was just a, it was just a very odd... Um, turn off a of ferry road. It was never going to work out. It was sort of tossed out, you know, the second we put it on paper. Um, so the two w was this alternative um, or one that hugs a little bit um, closer to ferry road and Route 18 and comes a little bit tighter. This one, though, um, and I sent all three of them to DOT, to their project management group, to um, their access management group, and to their traffic um, signal and safety group. And I said, hey, what do you prefer? And, and the head of all those departments. And I said, and I also sent them the, the, the one that Mazer had. Um, and, and the consensus was either this one or the concept that hugs um, a little bit more of Ferry Road and Route 18. And the pluses and minuses of both. Um, I came up with a cost analysis on this one. Um, this would cost, and 1039000 was my preliminary estimate. Um, but, you know, th there's a lot that, that's up in the air. There was a contingency I could have added, but I, I just, for the, for the part that we're looking for here, and that's the cost sharing, I kind of wanted to have a basis. Um, our, the consultant had submitted a, a, a cost um, preliminary cost estimate for the construction of, um, of their concept, um, somewhere about 350000 But they didn't include some of the upfront, you know, mobilization, um, maybe some, you know, some upfront costs that DOT actually requires. So I followed DOT's cost estimating guidelines when I was coming up with this concept or the cost estimate for this concept. And I applied that same rationale to what um, cost estimate um, Mazer had provided to me. So for their concept, I came up with about 745000 For this concept, I came up with $1,039,000. So when um, 
our traffic consultant had come back to me with the cost sharing. What is the percentage, the cost sharing based on DOT methodology? There's two methods that you could use, one basically for unsignalized intersections and one for signalized intersections. When she ran through the numbers, she came up with, for this concept, and it's based on capacity. Now, what is the capacity that you're adding to this intersection? She came up with 44% for the township's concept. She came up with, I think it was 66, was it 66? 60. 60 for Mazur's concept. If you take 60 of the 745,000, you come up with like something like 430 something thousand. When you do 44% of the 1,039,000, you come up with something like 458 or let's say 460, the difference of which is 30,000. So in my mind, it's like, well, I got a roundabout what concept it would be. It would be something between what Mazur is proposing and what I'm proposing. And the difference of which, when you're talking about cost sharing or contribution wise, is about $30,000 in the big picture. So in my mind, if I called it 450,000 or 440,000 to be the middle part of those two numbers, that in my mind would be the contribution that the developer would make for this intersection. And that would be in lieu of the pro rata c calculated cost that I had come up with back in the October meeting that we had, which I believe was 85,000. So that's what we would be looking for as far as contribution for this intersection. So we had talked about now the concept plan on Ferry Road. Oh, I'm sorry, did you? No, I'm sorry. We, we had talked about the concept plan on Ferry Road um, in that we're almost there, um, with the exception of that sidewalk. We now talked about cost sharing and as far as the percentage that would be required based on the two concepts and the dollar amount associated with that. Um, and, and there was also, there was also, uh, I, wanna, I just wanna skip around here. There was also the Warren analysis um, that we had talked about um, for, for Ferry Road. And I had a conversation with Mr. Rashad before this meeting, um, and I had said based on Deanna's comments, it's not warranted. Um, but we've had further discussions, um, Mr. Proska and myself, um, this afternoon um, in, in in my mind, a lot, of the, a lot of the traffic, if you want to make a left turn, there's an issue there because of the volume that's coming down Ferry Road. And if you want to make a safe left turn out of that driveway, um, it would be a better approach if there was a signal there so that anybody that wants to make a left would then just go to that driveway. Um, and I'm, I'm going to let Mr. Prosca take over um, as far as the Warren analysis. Um, and just some information that he shared with me this afternoon that I think it's important. So we, we reviewed the um, submission that Mazur made in terms of the signal warrants. And it was based on general um, you know, requirements that are laid out by the MUTCD, which is uh, set by federal regulations. And it's, it's essentially based on traffic volumes um, at an intersection, whether a signal is warranted. It's based on volume threshold. So we looked at it, and there they're close, they don't meet at a posted speed limit of 40 miles an hour, but they're within a threshold where that number changes when the speed limit or the 85th percentile speed, so the speed that people are traveling on that road is higher than 40 miles an hour. So we think that those volumes are at that location that a speed study along Ferry Road um, should be submitted um, to see what the, the prevailing speed is on that road. And if it's over 40 miles an hour, we believe that the signal warrants would be met. So basically, um, I think from the last meeting till now, those were the three things that we were, we were looking to sort of 
um, sort of accomplish? I think it's, it's what were the improvements going to be at Route 18 and Ferry Road? And at this point, I think we're close, but it doesn't have to be concrete. You know, we know now what, you know, just adding a right turn lane or a slip, slip ramp would cost and what that cost sharing would be. Um, or we have an idea, and quite honestly, it can go either way. You know, during, you know, when I had talked to DOT, one of the important comments that they had said on mine was, hey, you know, that shoulder, did you consider reconstructing that shoulder um, because now you're, tra you're turning it into an acceleration, deceleration lane because now there's a driveway right off the page of that. Um, and I had said, I had considered it, I put it in my cost estimate, I put the pavement rehabilitation in the cost estimate, but I didn't put the widening that would probably be required because now you have to probably increase that lane from 12 to 15 feet, or maybe now you have to add additional drainage or relocate some poles. Um, again, it's conceptual, that, that cost estimate, because you know we could certainly keep on going. You know. Um, I'm trying to make it a fair calculation for the developer so that we can give him a reasonable um, preliminary cost estimate. And I'm not looking to blow it out of the water, but I'm looking to have someone share in the cost of that intersection improvement because it's failing now and it will be failing in 2019. Yeah, Mr. Ms. Shapiro, just to summarize with respect to your opinion, at least as to traffic safety, uh, I'm assuming then that you're advocating that this concept C uh, would be the the most optimal, uh, uh, the most optimal scenario from a traffic safety standpoint. Yes, I, I mean my my intention on this one too was to try and avoid um, the hospital sign too because that would require relocation. I mean also the hospital owns this island, so it's property acquisition. I mean they paid pennies on the dollar to DOT for this, and we're going to pay a premium for it because they're not going to look to to do anything, you know, or or to be bothered by this. Um, so. Again, I was very reasonable in the cost for the relocation, the cost for the right-of-way acquisition. I think that this is the optimal one. There was another iteration right before this where it's a little bit less pavement on the ramp, um, but a little bit more reconstruction on Route 18. It's a wash. Um, but when I talk to DOT, um, they seem to um, prefer this alternative. Um, the only one was Chris Barrett's who said um, either the other concept where it hugs a little bit onto um, ferry road and come in where it gives a little bit more of an acceleration an acceleration lane might be better because the driveway for the next development is a little bit um, further down off the page um, but then he said well there's pluses and minuses because now you're bringing it close to the intersection and now there's that u-turn movement so it's like you you plus on one side you you minus on the other and I thought that this was probably the best approach to to come up with that cost analysis thank you Okay, does anyone from the board have any? Yeah, yes, I do. Mr. Uh, Chairwoman, uh, I'm sorry. There, Mr. Rashid, is, could he have an opportunity to respond? This is a lot of new information that we just received. I don't know. Okay, wanna... we'll let him respond then we'll It is a lot of new information. In terms of this traffic signal, the traffic signal is not warranted, plain and simple. Also, the manual on uniform traffic control devices does state that even if a traffic signal is warranted, the warranting in itself is not enough to justify the installation of a signal. In other words, you have to get the signal to be warranted with the numbers, but also you have to have a good reason to install a signal. There is no good reason here. The, your engineer talked about uh, left turns um, having difficulties making it. I just checked the traffic study and the delay and the level of service for the left turns exiting the development are very satisfactory. It is working on the level of service C with a delay between 15 and 20 seconds depending on the hour of the day, which is uh, uh, a very good operation. So I feel very strongly that the traffic signal is absolutely not justified, not needed, and not warranted. Regarding the intersection of Route 18 and Ferry Road, I would remind the board that this is an off-site, off-track intersection. Uh, with this application, we have ensured that uh, 
uh, we have safe and adequate ingress and egress to our development, and that's what is required. Um, the driveway servicing the development is uh, safe and efficient. We've even improved it. We've added uh, uh, a left turn in, in addition to what we had done before. And um, uh, with that, we're in um, uh, compliance uh, with standard requirements. The intersection that we're discussing is an offsite, uh, being that this is a uh, permitted use. It is my opinion that the applicant is not responsible for offsite uh, improvements. That said, we will, of course, agree to provide the contribution under the municipal ordinance, which is consistent with the municipal land use law that was calculated to be approximately $85,000 by Ms. Shapiro uh, in her earlier memo. Um, but we're not authorized to uh, agree to a number that's, you know, four or five times that number. I just want to be very clear about that. Yeah, all right, so just to summarize the applicant's position then, you're not willing to engage in any type of speed study along Ferry Road, as suggested by our traffic consultant? That is correct. Okay. I don't think it's needed, and it wouldn't accomplish any good purpose. Okay, well, obviously, we're going to rely upon the testimony and expertise of our uh, professionals. Mr. Rashid, I understand your position. I, I respect it, uh, but uh, obviously, the board will, will have to deal with the issue of uh, contribution uh, ultimately, when we uh, when we vote on this application, um, I mean the speed study issue is obviously something that's now being recommended with respect to the ferry road intersection. But uh, I guess we can talk about that later. Okay. Okay. Um, any question, Mr. Schmidt? You have yes. a question. Uh, the traffic study was conducted at the standard a.m. and the p.m. hours, but these times do not take into consideration the times at which the hospital shift changes occur, particularly in the afternoon. Uh, that would add to the volume of traffic exiting and entering out along the way, which would really benefit from a left and right turn, separate turns, particularly when school moms and a slow moving school bus or two are added to the mix. Mr. Schmidt, we actually did that. We did uh, consider the shift change. We spoke to the hospital. We looked at the volumes that shift change and we found that the volumes that we have analyzed are actually higher. In other words, our study analyzed the highest AM volumes and the highest PM volumes. The uh, AM volume that we analyzed does involve the shift change of the hospital. The PM does not. And it's my understanding that the AM shift change is the major shift change to the hospital. They work on 12 hour shifts. So we actually vetted all that and we had a long discussion with your engineer and traffic engineer uh, on that particular issue. And I believe that they're satisfied with the way we conducted the study. Any other comments or questions by the board? I'm sure I have some yeah. statement or comments I'd like to make. Um, I know you said that the traffic signalization at uh, Avalon away and Ferry is not warranted. It's not justified, but I think it's it's needed there. I mean, I need the impact. Of, if you listen to the residents as they came up and they spoke about Ferry Road, the difficulty it is getting in and out of their developments on Ferry Road because it is um, from Route 18 to Route 9 is open. There's not one slowdown. Um, people exceed the speed limit there, and they have a difficult time of pulling out, making left turns out of their developments on an off ferry road, I believe this would benefit having a signal there providing that gap, which it has done in many parts of other parts of the town that we have spoken about, allows that gap so that now people can safe, safely make it out on ferry road further to the east of this signal. And I think all along we've been talking about, you know, now you're not committing to any off-site improvements. It's kind of depressing to sit here now and say that, that this development, you don't have to do anything. I think it's, uh, you know, it's kind of an insult that you don't have to do anything. We did a lot that you're even sitting here tonight. Mr. Mayor, we I changed the zoning it. so you could sit here tonight. So to come here and say we don't have to do anything, I think it's a signalization there makes life better for not only your people, not only the school bus drivers, but makes life better for everybody between Route 18 and Ferry Road. It's a couple thousand people. 
That's not warranted, that's not justified, but maybe it's the responsible thing to do. Yeah, maybe it's you. the right thing to do. Thank you, Mayor. Maybe it's what you should do. Thank you, Mayor, for your comments. But let me just uh, respond first by saying I did not say we're not doing anything. Actually, we did a I lot. I thought I heard you say we're not responsible for any off-site improvements. Oh, yeah, off-site, that's correct. Uh, but uh, I'm and, sorry and, if I miss. Okay. <laughs> But we, we are doing a lot for the intersection, for the driveway, for Ferry Road in proximity. We even, like um, uh, your engineer testified to earlier, are building a, um, a place for people to uh, congregate or to wait for the, for the bus on Ferry Road, uh, putting a uh, short uh, length of um, uh, sidewalk um, and a pad for that so purpose. So int we're introducing pedestrians but, now to this roadway. No. Even more of a case to make it safer. No, actually, uh, we're doing it for the, for the uh, benefit mostly of the hospital. That bus stop exists today. It's been in operation for a long time. We're making it better. So that's for the uh, benefit of the community. Now, as far as the signal, in addition, I don't want to repeat myself, Mr. Mayor, but uh, I used to work at DOT 15 years prior to doing this, and I did signal justification all my career. Um, I could tell you I've never seen a signal being built for a condition like this ever in my entire career, not even close. But another factor that I didn't discuss with the board tonight is um, it is very uh, discouraged to install signals in close proximity to each other. And the reason here, I can explain it in simple terms. The approach on Ferry Road to 18 has detectors. It, uh, it has sensors that sense the presence of vehicles. So the green time doesn't sync at the same uh, cycle uh, every time that the green changes. So that changes. In other words, what I'm trying to say, it would be impossible to sync a neighboring traffic signal to it because it's detectorized. So that would cause these two signals to be most of the time not working in concert with, with each other, which would really cause more delays in the area. The other factor that um, would make installing a signal in this location um, uh, not a good idea or not necessary is that you do have a signal a few hundred feet away which would provide gaps usually a signal becomes justified where you have no gaps and you have no other signals in proximity. This one does have the signal at Route 18, which stops traffic and provides the gaps. So when you look at, at all these factors, but also at the, uh, at the standards, that signal is not justified at all, not even close. Yes, we'll agree to disagree. And I believe the technology does exist to sync these signals. So I'm, I'm not an engineer, and I'm not being argumentative with you. I'm just... No, it, it does exist. If you put a signal on Route 18, absolutely. But uh, the technology doesn't exist, not because of lack of technology, but because how that approach operates. It changes. Usually when signals sync with each other, they are on the same cycle length, and that approach gets the yellow at the same time every cycle, which will not happen here. So as a traffic engineer, then how would you address the issue of Ferry Road? How would you address the issue of making it uh, safer to, to exit and uh, to get out of your development onto Ferry Road? How would, what would you do? What could you do? Well, Mayor, according to the study, there is no uh, need to do anything in addition to what we did. As I said before, the capacity analysis shows that exiting traffic from the driver to ferry uh, are operating with a level of service C. And board members have, you've heard this before many, many times, it is a very good level of service when you can achieve C. Uh, and uh, the levels of service, they go from A to F, uh, normally, you know, uh, A, B, C, and sometimes D is considered to be uh, uh, very acceptable and, and desirable. And then when you go to E or F, then you are encountering more delays. So in this particular case, having a level of service C, a delay of between 15 and 20 seconds, really doesn't uh, provide us any reason to say you need a signal. So um, uh, what else would you do? I mean, I, I thought we did we did a lot, uh, Mayor, to this uh, uh, design. What if there was a driveway or, or, an, or a roadway coming onto Ferry Road to the west that was operating at a D or an F or an E? 
Would we, a signal uh, make sense to put it there as opposed to your driveway? Uh, your maybe, driveway, that driveway. Maybe, I, I, but it's a hypothetical situation. I have to look at all the different factors, do the warrant analysis, do the capacity analysis, <coughs> and use them both. You know, have the signal warranted, but also have the capacity analysis show that there is excessive delay and excessive uh, uh, and, a, and a poor level it's, of service. It's not only a delay; it's the safety of pulling out into traffic that sometimes is going 50 to 55 miles an hour, and we do enforcement in, on that road quite a bit. So it's not only the delay; it's the time; it's the it's the safety factor. No, I I fully understand uh, that point, and and you're making a good point. But then using that logic, um, all driveway servicing businesses on Ferry Road would require signalizations. Uh, keep in mind, this development um, doesn't generate um, a lot of traffic. Um, uh, if you compare it, for example, to a hospital or to a shopping center or to an office building, it generates less traffic. So if we're going with the... Um, uh, logic that uh, make you want to make it easier and safer, we just can't because then every driveway servicing, an office building, a small shopping center or a shopping strip, or even sometimes you have coffee shops that generate more traffic than these developments, you just can't go ahead and put signals to all of them. It's just unreasonable. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. Is anybody else? Yes, Mr. Ping. So you're saying a coffee So you're saying a coffee shop generates more traffic than a 200 and I believe it was 50 um, smart. I said that many complex? uses many uses generate more traffic than uh, 200 residential units of apartments uh, of uh, that are apartments, and I listed uh, an office building. I said a shopping center, even a small one, by the way, shopping strip would generate more traffic. A, um, a gas station with convenience generates a lot more traffic. And then I said uh, uh, possibly a, a, a very busy coffee shop could generate more traffic than this. I'm not a traffic expert, but it doesn't sound right to me. You're entitled to your opinion, but... You're entitled uh, to yours. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Um, our traffic... Did you want to respond to uh, Mr. Rashad regarding the traffic signal and warrants, et cetera? Sure. As I said uh, before, we, we looked at the um, <coughs> signal warrant that was uh, submitted by Mazur. Um, we do believe that a speed study uh, is needed for us to complete our analysis and, you know, whether a signal is warranted there or not. We think the volumes are at that point where the speeds become uh, a factor in determining whether traffic signal uh, is warranted and should be installed there or not. And May I respond to this yes. one more time, Madam Chair? I've been doing this for 31 years. I've never seen or done a traffic study, I mean, sorry, a speed study in conjunction with a warrant analysis. Well, I think that, that the request to me seems reasonable because Ferry Road is an extremely busy road and it has become busier and busier over the years because of 516 being so congested. So a lot of people use it as an alternative that may not even live in that immediate area. And then you're adding, you know, 240 apartments with at least one car or two cars per apartment. So it's going to ha definitely have a very, you know, it's a real impact. And I think if there's an opportunity to get a signalized, um, you know, at that intersection to be able to get move people in and out more quickly and more efficiently, then it would be worth doing the test to see if it does meet the speed warrant. Um, I don't know what to tell you, Madam um, Chair, but uh, it's really unfair to the applicant that this is coming at the, at the last hour, um, uh, something that, uh, first of all, I think it's totally unnecessary. I think it's a waste of time to do a speed study. I said from the very beginning, months and months ago, that a traffic study is not justified. We did the study. We proved it's not justified. I spoke with Nicole earlier today, and she agreed it's not justified. And now we hear this, that now we do a traffic study, a speed study, and we show that the speed is higher than 40, and maybe it's justified then. I don't think that's, that's how we do um, uh, signal justification, Madam Chair. 
not only it's unfair to the uh, applicant, it's just very um, uh, unorthodox to uh, uh, conduct a speed study to justify a traffic signal installation. And I don't want to repeat myself again. I said that twice already. Uh, but there are a lot of things that have to happen before the signal is justified, and we're not even close. Madam Chairman, if I could just respond, and you know, I don't think we need to beat this to a dead horse. We understand what the applicant's position is, but um, you know, your position is that it would be unfair to the applicant. It would also be unfair to this municipality uh, to approve something without having fully vetted out uh, all of the traffic analysis. Uh, in fairness, I think the report was provided before Christmas, uh, you're, you're, and obviously it's been reviewed now by our traffic expert. Nicole, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I, I think certainly we have to balance uh, the concerns of the municipality with respect to traffic safety. It is, a, it is the big issue here. And Nicole? M Mr. Sachs, um, I just want to add, it's not something that, that just come up at the ninth hour or the nth hour or whatever it was. This is something I asked in my memo in September. It's something that was reiterated in the memo by our traffic consultant subsequent to that. It was something that was argued in, in Mazer Consultant's response back to us that it wasn't warranted in their November response back to us. The delay is not on my part, and I do apologize for for misspeaking this afternoon before I had gotten a chance to talk to Brian about the signal warrant analysis and the new information he brought to my attention. I'm not a traffic engineer. Um, I don't make any representation to that, so I did speak out of turn, and I do apologize for that, but this is information that was in my original memo dated September 19th. All right, so, so just to summarize, I think there's three open issues with traffic. One of them is the request of the municipality for a traffic study to be uh, undertaken at that uh, intersection of Ferry Road. Uh, secondly, uh, we have to just at, at some point deal with the issue of the uh, contribution uh, for the Route 18 and Ferry Road intersection. And, and lastly, uh, Mr. Kasub, I know you want to confer with your client about the sidewalk extension of approximately 335 feet uh, with the ADA ramps. So I think those are the three open issues, Madam Chairwoman. Does anybody else from the board have any questions or comments? Yeah, do we have any other are you witnesses? done? Yeah. Are you I was just going to ask if we could maybe just take a quick two-minute recess for me to confer with my client on those sure. issues that you just outlined. Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Sachs, Mr. Sachs, and the sidewalk that leads from the intersection of Avalon Way and Ferry Road into their development to, right. that, to that building. There was a comment number 95 that addresses that piece, too. Four, four open issues. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Okay, Thank you. We're going to take a five minute break. Is that enough? Enough time? I think so. Okay, okay we're reconvening. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, Madam Chairwoman and members of the board, I did confer with my client. I did confirm that we will provide the sidewalks that were requested at both locations, uh, the over 300 linear feet and also along Avalon Way. Uh, I also did confirm that we're not going to be providing the speed study based upon our uh, expert's opinion that it's not warranted, it's never been done before uh, in his 31 years of experience. Uh, this is not how traffic warrant analysis are conducted. Um, the other issue that was raised was the contribution. Uh, very clear that uh, I believe the law is very, very clear on this issue that the board can require us to pay our fair share pro rata contribution pursuant to municipal ordinance. Uh, the board engineer made that determination uh, approximately $85,000. Uh, we have agreed to provide that money pursuant to a developer's agreement with the municipality, um, but we're not going to be providing a, a sum that's a, you know, a multiple of five, uh, give or take of that number. So I just want to recap with the board where we stand on this. There are some issues uh, that are still uh, outstanding, um, but I think we all know what those issues are. I thought there were four issues. Well, well uh, sidewalk, side, oh, the sidewalk yeah. is two. Okay. Yeah. So you've agreed to both the sidewalk things. Agreed to both the sidewalk issues. We've also and no to the other. Correct. No to the speed study, um, and also the fair share contribution. We're going to provide it pursuant to the ordinance. Uh, which is what the municipal land use law requires. I can cite it, you know, section 42 um, of the municipal land use law uh, authorizes 
the board to impose uh, as a condition of an approval, you know, the pro rata fair share contribution that's to be done by municipal ordinance, and that's what we're agreeing to do. Uh, these other issues are, there's, we understand that there's an existing traffic con condition in the area, congestion, um, but those issues are not a basis for this board to deny it, and certainly not a basis for this board to shift additional cost onto this applicant. That's our position. I think we can respectfully disagree. I'm not trying to anticipate what you're going to say, Mr. Sachs, but um, I'm, I'm fairly sure you're going to disagree with what I just said. And, and you probably can't anticipate <laughs> what I'm going to say, but um, you know, certainly with respect to the fair share contribution, I think Ms. Shapiro had stated uh, at a prior meeting uh, her, how she calculated it and her interpretation uh, of, the, uh, of the law, which I don't necessarily disagree with. Uh, and secondly, as to the speed study, um, I mean, it's certainly a request that the municipality is now making. Uh, it certainly goes to the issue of traffic safety. Uh, we'll, it, I mean, we're not happy with your response to that, Mr. Kasuba, I'm sure, but Ms. Shapiro, if you want to add anything, certainly. I mean, certainly if they don't want to do the speed study, we could we could take that lift on as a township to, to give the board a clearer vision of what's going on along Ferry Road. I mean, the, the speeds, in my opinion, are greater than 40 miles per hour. I mean, people do 40 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. So um, I think it's important to see what that number is. Um, and, and we could take that heavy lift on and take the cost on um, ourselves to make sure that the board has a clear picture. And maybe I'm wrong. Does anyone else from the board have any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, open to the public. Ms. Kasuba, you have no other witnesses this evening, I assume, right? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is, um, are we doing just traffic? Um, actually, I think Mr. Kasuba has put all of his testimony yeah, on so it, so you I'm can not really mistaken. comment on any, ask questions or comment on anything, including the presentation tonight, so. Yes, that's correct. I believe that we're concluded, and if there's questions or comments from the public, I think it would be the appropriate time to take those now. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to? Yes. Do you want to come up and give your name and address, please? <clears throat> and actually, for the just for the benefit of the court reporter, if uh, when you... When you state your name, if you could spell your name as well, spell, spell your last name. My name is George Howell, H-O-W-E-L-L. -L. I live at 16 Carmel Court. I took that intersection every day for 10 years. I worked on Route 9. Um, I saw some horrifying car accidents at that intersection. I saw uh, an accident where three people in an SUV were killed because a tanker blew that light coming the other way. For you as a traffic engineer to tell me that there's no reason for any kind of modification to be made or any kind of additional study is absolutely horrifying to me. I've seen some really bad accidents, and I think adding 200 units to this road is a really bad idea. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Bill Spencer. Uh, we're in uh, 8 Beacon Place, Old Ridge. Uh, SPN CER's last name. Uh, we're new to Oldbridge. We moved here a year ago. Ironically, we just sold our home in Edison. We lived in for 35 years to avoid a situation that you're doing here. We lived in a development off of Vineyard Road. I don't know if you know that area. It is uh, a road that borders Route 1 to Route 27 as a cut through just as very road. And Edison, in order to get rateables, put in a warehouse for Amazon and FedEx right across from a 24-hour Walmart and, uh, and a Costco. And on the other end of the traffic light that cuts you out on Route 1, they're redeveloping the Ford plant with a, uh, they're putting hotels, they're putting in a movie theater, they're putting in a Sam's Club that's there already. It blocked the development in. You cannot get out of there. So, I mean, it's ironic we moved into a situation we tried to avoid. But when I hear things that are going on here, it's just total inconsistencies. I mean, I've never been involved in this stuff before, but you know, you hear the number of people with the number of cars that they're saying, how 40 of them at other meetings that we've been to, 40 cars are gonna impact you at different times of the day. Why are you putting in between the two developments 800 cars coming into the area? You talk about the number of kids going to school, all right? They were talking 40. A lot of these units are two and three bedroom apartments. 
what's going into the other apartments? Is it kids? And you're saying that 40 kids were going to impact the school, but you're putting a bus stop for 20 in the one area? I mean, there's just so many inconsistencies. The traffic consultant said about a delay in your traffic light earlier. Coming from Route 18, you have the traffic coming south, coming out of Jug Hill. There's no delay light. The only delay light would be if you were making a left turn coming south on 18 onto Ferry, but if you're coming north, there's no delay lights. There's so many inconsistencies that I'm spotting it. I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm retired. We moved into the area. I'm in and out all day long onto Ferry. There was traffic all day long on that road. It's probably the heaviest road in the, in the area. You talked about, I think he said the traffic on 18 and on Route 9 were Fs by the DOT in other meetings. What does that do to us? Does that give us a good rating? Or do we still have an F area by a hospital? I mean, in public safety, I don't think you want to put any congestion up there. You know, there's other things, other traffic studies that you've had. When they first wanted to use Oakwood Parkway, they were, wanted to use Oakwood Parkway as a secondary because we said the driveway by the hospital was too narrow. Now all of a sudden, it's not narrow? That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, the school bus stop. I mean, now you want them to walk down from the, where the condos were going to be. In prior meetings, they said they had to drive their garbage down from there because it was too far. Now you're going to have the kids walking? I don't know what the distance, distance is because I don't see it on the maps or anything. But I mean, it's just, things just don't make sense. You know, it's, uh, and then to say you don't want to do a speed study, people are going down that road all the time. People are ticketing all the time going down that road because I see Mayor, the, the cops on the, are doing a great job. They're there all the time. I always see them there. But I mean, I, I'm going in and out off of uh, Schindler because we come out Beacon to Schindler. And it's tough to make a left-hand turn. I think you really need to have them do those kinds of studies and really look at this. I, I don't see putting the people in that area and that hospital, which you know we're trying to develop things with the hospital. I've, I've seen on TV with the things going on with first aid in the town, how we want to promote the hospital and, and how it's a key thing in our township. And we're going to throw more congestion into one of the most you know, needed areas in the township. It doesn't make sense to me. Like I said, I have no access around with anybody because I'm new to the town. I don't know anybody. <laughs> so it's, it's just things are not logic of what they're saying. And to put more onto Ferry Road when you've got 12,000 cars a day from what I've heard from other meetings here just doesn't make sense. Ferry and 516 from our short time in the township seems to be the worst roads in this township. And you know, I, I don't think you should put any more development into that area. It just doesn't make sense. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else that wishes to speak? Yes. Ray Zadlock, Z A D L O C K. I live at 45 Ferry Road. Uh, my home would be right on the corner of the new intersection that they propose. My question is, once um, I seen some drawings, you're going to put some paint on the road, it would it interfere with my driveway now for me getting in and out, making lefts and rights? Because I'm pretty close to the uh, intersection. No, you should be able to continue to make the same maneuvers you make today. Okay. Um, since I'm most impacted with this new entrance way, I was wondering if they would oppose maybe a, a fence along my property to lessen the burden of the traffic. Since I'm the only residential home really in that whole area that's getting uh, the impact of this driveway, roadway. I'm not sure where do you want the fence? Along the proposed road that borders my property. Proximity to my home to the to the road because that driveway originally was built with the uh, variances uh, because I think of the setbacks with my property. But <clears throat> Bertie, right here. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe that area has a landscaping plan that's been proposed uh, for that, that that area will be landscaped. 
We can pull the up the landscaping from plan. The road to my property is within inches. I don't, there's no room for landscaping unless you're going to put it on my property. <laughs> Are you contemplating? I'm not it sure or? what we're talking. I'm I'm, um, I'm I'm not sure what we're talking about here. I was hoping she was going to pull up the plan. I'm working. Okay. On the, you're on the looking at that exhibit. You're on Ferry Road on the right hand side of the driveway? Correct. I'd have to confer with my client. I don't know. I don't think this is an issue that we've addressed before. What's your address again, sir? 45 Ferry Road. 45 Ferry Road. Okay, thank you. Mr. Zadlik, I guess the applicant will get back to us and take that under consideration. Do you have any other comments or questions? Um, back to the light right there at that intersection. I'm not a big fan of lights because I've seen where one car wants to come in or out and it causes a lot of traffic. Uh, I don't see it any much different than down the road with Foxborough or the Kinder Care uh, as far as traffic goes. I don't know if a light would really, it would, in my opinion, kind of hurt the traffic more than it would help the couple of cars coming in and out throughout the day. but. I could be wrong with that, but I'm not a big fan of lights. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Yes. The Oakwoods Park Homeowners Association. Well, we would like to put on testimony of our expert, but we would like to make sure that um, the applicant has completed all of his testimony or there's gonna be another meeting and more decisions to be made. I think at this point, I think we're concluded. I mean, depending well, on Well, I, I think the applicant change. would hope we're concluded, but I, I don't think the board thinks we're concluded. So um, considering the testimony that I've heard this evening from our uh, traffic expert and from our professional engineer, whom we uh, obviously place a great deal of confidence in. So if that answers your question. But if you want to put your witness on, that's, that's fine. There may be other issues by our witness to address sure. if there's going to be more meetings, so we would rather defer if that's acceptable to the board. Well, I, I think it, I mean, I, I, I don't think, yeah, I mean, I don't think it could hurt you to put your testimony on this evening. I mean, I did look at, I read your traffic experts report, and I know you've got a concern about Oakwood, so certainly if you want to engage that testimony this evening, I think you should do that. And if you want, and certainly if we're not going to con, uh, vote on this application this evening, based upon some recommendations from our staff, then you certainly can come back and address any, any new issues that arise. Okay. Before we do that, I just have um, some questions, since we did mention the fence and all of that. Um, let's start with the traffic signal, since we spend so much time on that tonight. Um, what will happen now to the warrant for the signal, now that Avalon Way will be used 100% of the time instead of 60% of the time? We actually considered 100% of the time in our warrant, warrant analysis. And that works out well? And the signal was not warranted. And uh, when did you uh, do that study? Approximate times and days, because we don't have that study. We did it, uh, let me pull the study and give you the, the date. It was submitted December 15, and so I'm assuming it was done during the first week of December. Do we know the times of the day that it was conducted? 
Yeah, we put uh, pneumatic tubes and we collected uh, volumes 24 hours um, for several days. Has the applicant considered um, the material for the emergency gate? Should that have to be installed? The uh, design? Not, not yet. And what is the, I guess, final decision at this point by the applicant with regard to the fence? Would that be a perimeter fence? I'm not the right expert to be discussing the fence. Uh, um, I think that's... Um, Probably the site engineer or maybe Mr. Kasuba can talk about the fence. I believe the fence that you're referring to is not the fence, the location that the previous witness or member of the public was referring to. You're talking about uh, closer to where the connection is to Oakwoods Parkway. Correct. Um, and we're not proposing to install a fence there. Uh, the testimony that you cited to in your letter was, I think, directed to the landscape engineer. And he said, well, if a fence was going to be installed, here's you know, approximately where it would go. Uh, right, the applicant never so. committed to installing a fence there. We're not trying to create this to be a gated community. It's not a prison. Um, you know, there's gonna be, you know, pedestrian access. If people have friends in one community versus the other, they're gonna be able to walk there. Um, I mean, we have a road there. We're gonna have a gate that we're proposing for to prevent uh, vehicle access except for emergency vehicles. Uh, but we're not proposing it to be uh, a gate in any way that would prevent people from walking on the road, should they so choose. So if we have emergency access there, how is that possible in conjunction with having pedestrian traffic coming through? Pedestrian traffic can be accommodated along, uh, if that's desired, with the emergency access. What width were you considering for the emergency access gate? Uh, it's my understanding, actually, that pedestrian access is not going to be provided uh, at that location. So the gate would be designed in a way not to leave room for any pedestrian access. That is my understanding. So you mean the, it's gonna be the width of the Oakwood Parkway? That is correct. So uh, I don't know if it's a question for you, but the planning board said that we can ask questions of anyone here in the application. Um, would there be a problem connecting a fence to the emergency gate? Since it doesn't seem to be an issue, there is no sidewalk there. It's not safe for the pedestrians to walk through there, and it's not safe for the emergency vehicles, well, is it? My response would be since there is no sidewalk, there is no need to put a fence, there is no opportunity for people to walk. Um, so it's my opinion that a fence is not necessary. I think the gate that we're installing will provide the desired um, uh, division between the two developments. And also, uh, the word prison was used um, by the attorney. Could you elaborate on how um, a fence would be considered a gate? So it would be considered a prison, um, as there's so many different fences installed around Old Bridge and various other towns. Do we all live I'm in a prison? I'm not an expert on prisons, so I'm sorry I can't respond to that question. <laughs> Maybe Mr. Kasuba, you know a little bit more about prisons than I do. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that comment. <laughs> <You're an attorney. laughs> No, I just was intended to convey that this is not intended to be a gated community. Um. Is there any other concerns why you're so adamant about not having a fence um, between the two communities? I'm not, could you scroll up to the top a little bit more? 
I, I'm just not sure what it is that's actually sought to be achieved here. Um, there's a really long, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to testify, but I, I just don't understand, you know, if there's a, a small area, the uh, area that's near Oakwood Parkway as a connection that you would like us to install a fence. I believe that there was Mr. Fishbone reached out to you earlier and talked about that. Um, I believe there's a retaining wall to the north side, if I have my directions correct, um, along there that we can install a fence there for some additional screening. Uh, on the other side of the gate that would be installed where Oakwood Parkway is, we can continue it on and connect it to that building. You know, we can install a fence there at that location. I think, I mean, I'm not trying to testify, but eight feet seems very high. I think that's what you put in the letter for a fence, whereas more of a, a five foot fence in my experience is more what's seen, um, you know, in a residential area. Um, is that something that would satisfy you? Um, what would satisfy is there's a fence connecting to the emergency gate. And um, because yeah, as we of could. now, the HOA is going to have a view of the garages. Um, your community is going to have a view of the manicured lawns of the Oakwoods Park HOA, while the Oakwoods Park HOA is going to have views of the garages. And I think um, um, even Mr. Lavallo said that he's very concerned about um, the visibility of all these communities from various angles. And we just want to make sure that there's uh, more of a buffer. We, the applicant agreed um, to do supplemental landscaping. Uh, I believe it was very extensive. I don't want to quote a number that I'm not sure is 100% accurate, but I remember it was quite a sizable number to do supplemental landscaping. Uh, I believe in the areas that, that she's indicating are areas of potential concern. Um, and I believe that Mr. Lavallo was satisfied with that as he was set forth in his report uh, that was submitted to this board. Uh, and the applicant, you know, we're not, you know, backing away from those commitments regarding the landscaping. If there's some, you know, fencing along Oakwood Parkway, um, excuse me, uh, I, I don't mean along Oakwood Parkway, I mean to the north and south of Oakwood Parkway along the areas that I previously described, uh, we'd be willing to do something along those lines. I'm not sure I'm being entirely accurate with where I'm describing it. Um, but I'm not sure that that will satisfy them. I'm not quite sure what the, what yeah. the concern is. I, I have a question, Ms. Parchik. I mean, is, is it the position of the Oakwood Park Homeowners Association not to have a sidewalk or a walkway uh, that would permit some type of pedestrian interconnection between the two developments? As of right. now, obviously, there is no sidewalks on Oakwood Parkway, and we would like to keep it that way, correct? No, I, well, no, that's, that's not the question I asked you. The question I asked you is to have an interconnection, however, between the two, uh, no. the two developments. Is that the position of the, yes. of the association? Yes. Okay. Because right. uh, now the emergency gate would end at property line between Avalon Bay and Oakwood Park, and so there is no room for pedestrian traffic. Well, no, there would, there would be room for, to put a walkway in. I mean, that's a very simple matter. You just put a five-foot section of walkway around the gate. Um, but that my other concern, by the way, also, and I know Mr. Hart's not here this evening, is fencing it in, if Mr. Hart needs to get to the other side of that, other side of that gate for whatever reason, before having a fire truck come through, he's going to have to jump over a fence, uh, and I'm not sure he wants to do that. Yeah. No, no, no. We're going to have a gate. But, 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 folks, I'm, I'm, I'm just making a comment, okay? I'm not passing judgment on what Ms. Perchik has indicated, but the impression I'm getting is that you don't want to have any type of interconnection. Okay. All right. But there, for Mr. Hart, um, there's going to be an emergency gate, which is wide enough to accommodate two cars, so two-way traffic. Now, my question was right, if, if there was a malfunction closed. with the gate, though, and he needed to go to the other side of the gate for whatever reason. I'm not a fire, I, I'm not a fire marshal. I don't drive fire trucks, but that's, that's the only concern I have. I know he's not here this evening, but okay. He did not speak to um, secondary access in case there is a malfunction. I think he did say that these uh, gates are usually reliable. So let's hope so. <laughs> let's not hope. 
for malfunction anytime soon. Um, so, uh, for the applicant, is there going to also be a natural barrier making it impossible to get from one property to another? I don't believe that's for this witness to talk about. Um, I mean, certainly. I mean, I mean areas. I, 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 I mean, difficult. Questions. I mean, I don't think it's impossible for people to walk through woods. People I mean, are going to do it. I mean, that's just human nature. If if you've got somebody who lives in Oakwood and wants to get into Avalon Bay to just walk around that community, they'll figure out a way of doing it, and vice versa. I mean, I think there is a fairly heavily vegetated buffer uh, between the two developments. But if that's your question. That's why we would like to have a fence so that people don't start using HOA's lawns for their own purposes, for barbecues, because it does look like a park now. So when people look at it, they can get confused if there's no fence. Obviously, the applicant knows where property lines are, but the people who live there don't. And uh, we will put on a case if we can just have a moment to confer, and then we'll be ready to present our witness. Hi, Edith Fuentes, F-U-E-N-T-E-S. I'm at 147 Red Pine Loop. I'd like to pull the minutes from the previous meetings because I am certain, and I know that a lot of people in this room heard that there was an agreement that we would put a fence around the perimeter of the development. So if we can pull those minutes, we'd like to see if they're, they're pulled. Well, we have submitted the transcripts, sorry, the we have submitted the transcript from the earlier meeting, but there was never any commitment by the applicant to put a fence around the perimeter of the property. What was discussed was putting a, if memory serves correctly, putting a fence around the perimeter of the retention basin or detention basin is what was discussed at the I earlier meeting. I recall the retention, but I also recall that we agreed to put a, a fence around the parameter. And the reason the parameter and the gate connecting to the Emergency entrance is important because we've had a recent um, recent attempt to uh, th car thefts. We've had drug sale. We have criminal mischief going on, and that's coming from the adjoining development that we currently have. So now we're going to put these other units here, which are rentals, and our fear is that we're going to have it coming from both sides and where that development in the middle. So security is a big concern for us. And so that's the reason we're asking for the connecting gates, which is we're trying to stop more criminal mischief and theft in our development. That, that's the reason for all of these questions, I think. And I'd like to pull the minutes because I'm positive that we agreed to offense around the parameter. My name is uh, David Trous, T-R-A-U-S-E, 147 Red Pine Loop as well. Um, I had a question uh, pertaining to the level of service uh, that we uh, discussed about that intersection. It was uh, rated C, you said? Yes. Um, I mean, if my memory serves, uh, do we always strive to have a level of service as C? I mean, there are two other letters that would be a lot better. I never strive to get a C in anything. I'm <laughs> just something I wanted to bring up. Well, if you put a traffic signal, actually the level of service overall will decrease, not in, or, or actually will get worse, because today no, but not, nothing stops traffic on Ferry Road. Once you put a signal, all that traffic will be stopped on Ferry Road. So overall, there'll be more delay and not less delay with a traffic signal. Yes. Ma'alim, U Z as in zebra, M A A L E E M, one five seven Red Pine Loop. You know what will stop and what will delay these traffic accidents? At one in the morning, if you're trying to get to Walmart in case of an emergency to get medication for your little kids or something like that, there have been numerous accidents at one in the morning. 
There are people speeding. Yes, we don't have lights right now. People coming from 9 to 18, trying to make that left turn, trying to make that right turn without stopping, without slowing down at that yellow light. There have been, I mean, just past November, there were horrible accidents. It was in the news. Everyone knows about it. It shut down Route 18 for hours, and that was at 7.30 in the morning. And it's, this is happening at 1 in the morning. This is happening in the Early in the morning, this is happening during the day. We are ready from 3 o'clock in the afternoon until 6 o'clock in the evening. All of 18 is backed up. It does not end. I mean, you have less lights, yeah. But if we have more lights, maybe this can, yes, it'll slow it down, but it'll prevent these accidents, these deaths. So i rather look at, I'm hoping the board will look at safety. Fine, if that, if that means that we have to stand at the light for five more minutes, so that we're alive for another five more years, maybe that might be better. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Are you ready? <clears throat> We'll slide over for you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let me. Why don't you raise your right hand? Let me just swear you in, sir. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Up, you got. Yes, I do. All right. Please uh, state your name, spelling your last name, professional affiliation, for the record. Good evening. My name is Baman Izadmer. I'm principal of ACE Engineering Group at 550 Colfax Road in Wayne, New Jersey. You know, spell your last name just for the court report. Sure. The, the, my last name is spelled I-Z-A-D-M-E-H-R. B-A-H-M-A-N. Purchase, I think you probably want to qualify him as an expert witness. So why don't you do that? Uh, Dr. Rizadmer, could you provide some of your professional experience for the board? Uh, sure. I have earned a degree in civil engineering as well as some graduate degrees in civil engineering and transportation engineering from University of Texas at Austin. I've been a professional engineer in the state of New Jersey since 1990. Uh, I also had a professional certification from ITE as professional traffic operation engineer. I have appeared before planning board and zoning board all across New Jersey, New York, and in Texas. And also, uh, I have been an expert witness in court systems all across New Jersey. And I have also taught uh, graduate school in transportation engineering at New Jersey Institute of Technology, and I have done research in the area of transportation and civil engineering at, uni at Rutgers University. Mr. Kasubi, you have any objection to his qualification? No, no, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I just want to confirm that you're currently licensed in the state of New Jersey. Correct? I am. Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Zadmer, could you please provide um, a brief summary um, of your report that you submitted to the planning board? Uh, sure. Um, we have reviewed the, the site plan as well as uh, some other reports, including the traffic uh, uh, report that was done by Mazer Associates, uh, specifically by my colleague, Maurice Rashid, uh, on this uh, application. And we find uh, they have followed uh, the uh, industry standards, you know, to conduct their traffic uh, counts and traffic report. So we are mostly in agreement with their traffic report. However, um, they could have done probably an, a different type of analysis in terms of the traffic generated by the rental units. So they assumed uh, the condos that are going to be built on this uh, property as uh, apartments. So if you do it, uh, if you separate those units into two categories, namely apartments as well as townhouses, you slightly get a little bit more traffic, which is not very substantial, I should say. So, but that will play a role in terms of their um, cost sharing. 
because the volumes are going to be just a bit higher. So therefore, the township could basically come up with a higher figure in terms of uh, cost sharing. So that, that would be one change. And in terms of um, the warrant study that it was discussed earlier for Avalon Way, which is currently the hospital driveway, and Ferry Road, um, we, we had a concern if the warrant was done when Oakwood Parkway was being utilized as a secondary access, uh, as well as uh, the Avalon Way. So uh, our attorney asked that question, and Mr. Rashad indicated that uh, basically in, in his warrant study, he assumed 100% of traffic will be utilizing Avalon Way. So with reference to that, uh, it's been uh, our, the association that have retained me to examine this application uh, that we would like to make sure Oakwood Parkway will not be utilized as a primary uh, access to the proposed development. So it looks all parties involved, all professionals involved, as well as the board members, are, are in agreement that Oakwood Parkway will not be utilized perpetually uh, for for a secondary access to this development. And um, with regard to that, in order to implement that, it necessitated a gate. So there has been a lot of discussions about the gate, and the fire department as well as uh, other emergency operators are in agreement that this gate will be electronically controlled and will be basically operated by means of a remote. So there were a lot of uh, questions before about, uh, you know, uh, sound creating devices, but this will be a very smooth and efficient operation of the gate. So we want to make sure the gate will be there and it will be sufficient to carry a two-way traffic for emergency vehicles. So there will be no uh, traffic issues on Oakwood Parkway for the residents which utilize the roadway. So any uh, potential problem on Oakwood Parkway will basically experienced by the, by the residents of these existing communities, not by Avalon Bay, Old Bridge community. So in terms of the gate width, it could be as wide as the existing Oakwood Parkway Road is. And as it was mentioned pr uh, previously in, in previous um, testimonies, there are no sidewalks on Oakway, Oakwood Parkway. Uh, so there, were, there has been a lot of discussions about a fence. And we still, for the reasons that has been mentioned here and the reasons that I will be mentioning, we really request that the board requires the developer, the applicant, to install a fence at least within the vicinity of the gate uh, so that uh, there will be a safe communities on both sides of the fence. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure some of you may have a fence around your yard. So it's not a segregation fence, but it's basically for privacy, for preventing uh, thefts, preventing you know, uh, communities utilizing uh, other people's property. So for those reasons, we think the fence is uh, a, a good enhancement to, for both communities. And it does not necessarily have to be eight feet uh, high. I don't know what your ordinance calls for. It could be six feet, yeah. Six feet is basically very common, and it's used all across New Jersey. So I would strongly recommend the fence. And I know there were questions, there were concerns by the board attorney about um, uh, accessing the, uh, the other side of the fence. I mean, that could be easily accomplished by installing a three foot wide or three and a half foot wide uh, access inside the fence, right immediately next to the gate. So that will solve the problem. They will, the fire department or the emergency folks will have the key to that uh, gate, or the gate could be, I mean, the, the doorway. The doorway could uh, be also operated alongside with the, with the gate itself. Because this will be a lift gate, so it will not be a sliding gate. So there will be really no conflict between that doorway and the gate itself, or the, or the doorway could be further away from the gate, so there will be no conflict in operation of the gate and the door itself. So, and also, we would like to make sure that this, uh, the closing uh, or restricting the 
access through Oakwood Parkway, not only for emergency cars, but it will not be utilized during the construction. So we really want to make sure that that doesn't happen because we don't want to subject to the residents of those communities uh, to heavy tra truck traffic during the construction. So not only we would like to see that it will be perpetual, but also not being utilized as a construction access to the site. Um, so, and there has been a lot of discussions about uh, ferry road, the traffic on ferry road, uh, speeding on ferry road, traffic volumes on ferry road. Um, I think it should be a concerted effort to really rectify the existing and the future problems that uh, the intersection of Ferry Road and Route 18 will experience. Definitely that has to be a collaborative effort uh, to fix that problem because I've, I've been there several times and I have utilized Route 18 uh, a lot in my, um, in my residency in New Jersey over the last 40 years. And I have noticed the intersection often is congested. So that problem, I mean, I'm not going to get into the uh, cost sharing and the municipal land law, but that effort has to be a collaborative effort between the township, New Jersey Department of Transportation, other projects that have been either recently been approved or are in the pipeline to be approved as well as this application. So basically that's also our concern because if that operation works well, I guess um, the residents of Oakwood community will be, I guess, in a better position, not worrying about if Oakwood will ever be utilized as a secondary access to the, to the site. So we would like to see definitely Ferry Road and Route 18 intersection, as well as the unsignalized intersection of Avalon Way and Ferry Road operate safely and efficiently. It will benefit everyone. So that's all pretty much I have to say. Thank you, Dr. Rizadnar, for being so thorough. Um, could you please just explain to the board what kind of material um, would be best for the fence and the gate, and what you, th in your opinion, obviously? Well, I, I think they could be of the same material or different material, but definitely the gate has to be a metal gate, and there are, I guess the fire uh, department, I believe Head was here, and I briefly talked to him, and he, he had a preference over wrought iron or aluminum gate, which will be maintenance free for years, but the fence could be of different material. It does not have to necessarily be of the same material, but something decorative, at least within the visible area of the buffer, uh, would, would benefit both properties, both, both communities. So, I, I mean, I would say maybe uh, aluminum, which is long-lasting and maintenance-free. Do you also um, recommend that for visibility purposes, uh, as opposed to a vinyl fence? For vis visibility purposes, in terms of traffic safety, and also for the emergency vehicles utilizing uh, Oakwood Parkway to access uh, Avalon Bay community, within the vicinity of the gate, I would definitely recommend a see-through fence. Uh, but then once you are beyond uh, the Oakwood Parkway right-of-way or area, then you could basically have either a see-through or for privacy reason, it could be a vinyl. Um, is it also going to be more durable than vinyl? And no, about the same. I would say vinyl is also very durable these days, you know. And also could be board on board, you know, wooden board on board, but they require maintenance. So either, I would say either vinyl or aluminum would be a better, good material for the fence. And could you also comment, please, on um, on the height of the fence? The applicant suggested the five foot. Do you, in your professional opinion, would you suggest a five or a six foot in uh, this situation? I would go with what the uh, the township ordinance calls for, six feet. Uh, that would accomplish the objective of the proposed fence for both communities. OK, 
Okay, if the board or the applicant has any questions, you may ask. Does the board have any questions? Yes. Uh, yes. I'm looking at your report, uh, page four. It has a table of... Yes. Uh, can you briefly explain to me uh, the difference between conducting the sample with only apartments and uh, if it's uh, townhouses and apartments? Okay, sure. Uh, table one in page five of the report. Page four. Four, I'm sorry, four of the report. Uh, basically, uh, I, I divided uh, the type of dwellings that are proposed for this site, apartments and townhouses. And altogether, uh, there are 252 units. Out of 252 units, we have 49 townhouses and 203 apartments. So if we divide them based on that, that classification of townhouses and apartments and use ITE trip generation rates, then we get a slightly higher uh, number of trips to be generated by this development once it's, once it's built. So then you can see the total of using apartments as opposed to these two different categories. The differences are not substantial. As you can see, for example, uh, during the AM peak hour, uh, Mazer reports shows 139, but if we follow this uh, method, we get 148. So we get nine more trips. But for PM, their numbers are 166, we get 174. So it's not really much of a big difference. It may play a, a role because uh, when you're doing your share, um, cost sharing calculations, you use the daily number. Mm -hmm. So the daily numbers are gonna be a little bit higher and therefore uh, the, the cost sharing on part of the developer will be a little bit higher than what Nicole had already calculated based on the old numbers. So that's basically where the difference is. In terms of the traffic analysis and quality of traffic and traffic operations level of services, uh, this will not play a role. Okay. It will be about the same. The same results that they got, this will also Thank you. bring about, yes. Anyone else have any questions? Kasuba, you have any questions of this witness? No. No? Okay. No? Okay. So, Ms. Shapiro, when you um, presented the, your, the information and our traffic engineer on the traffic light and doing a traffic study to see what the speed of the vehicles would be to whether or not that would meet the warrant, and you said if the applicant wouldn't do it, that you would, that the township could do it, or how? Um, I, th I think it's an important, inf important information to have if they're not willing to do it, and I, I understand that I'm asking for it. Um, now, you know, I mean, we're asking for it in light of the information that was provided on December 29th. Um, so, you know, it's my interpretation that they're not willing to do it. Um, it's not that much of a burden for the township to take care of. Actually, our police department can actually do it as well. Um, if, if they're not available to do it, then I could um, have an outside consultant um, take care of it, and, and it would be, you know, laying down some traffic counters and, and coming up with what the speed is on the roads. It's not really that big of a deal. I'm not understanding why the applicant's um, engineer is not willing to do it. Yeah, yeah, let me just comment. I mean, <laughs> I know Mr. Rashid's, and I respect Mr. Rashid, but I, I, I believe I would characterize his uh, testimony tonight as being uh, somewhat of net opinion, but you know, he, he's been doing this a long time, as have I, and I, I'm somewhat surprised 
in, in my experience as a municipal attorney, and I've been a municipal attorney for 23 years, uh, you know, that an applicant refuses to do something that uh, is certainly a request and, and of our staff and, and certainly something that's integral to uh, the discussion of this application and, and really traffic is the primary consideration. So um, certainly the applicant uh, can say no. I think that's somewhat unprecedented as well, but uh, Ms. Shapiro, how quickly can we, can we get a study done if, if need be? Um, I, I think because this week is a wash, but we could, uh, yeah, we, we, we could put it out next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. All right. Well, Mr. Kasuba, I, I understand, unless your position has changed, that you're willing to undertake that study, but it appears maybe not, so that at this point, uh, you know, our staff, our professionals have indicated that this, uh, you know, this traffic uh, uh, or speed study, I guess is what it is, speed study is, is necessary for this board uh, to give a, uh, a reasoned uh, uh, decision on this application. Uh, I think that's going to have to occur then. Uh, can we take another five-minute break? I just confer with my client. Absolutely. Okay. Okay.